This is the third video in our series about Argonne National Lab's suite of hydrogen fueling models. The first video demonstrated HD-SAM, the Hydrogen Delivery Scenario Analysis Cost Model. The previous video demonstrated HR-SAM, the Hydrogen Refueling Station Analysis Model. In this video, I'll explain HDR-SAM, the Heavy Duty Refueling Station Analysis Model. Using the familiar format, I'll describe the model and then provide scenario examples using the model. The subject of the HDR-SAM model is the refueling station phase of the hydrogen delivery process for heavy-duty vehicles. Hydrogen fueling costs for heavy-duty vehicles differ from those for light-duty vehicles with respect to fueling pressure, fill amount, fill rate, fill strategy, etc. With HDR-SAM, a user can evaluate the impacts of key market, technical, and economic parameters on the refueling cost of heavy-duty fuel cell vehicles. HDR-SAM was developed with support by the Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy's Fuel Cell Technologies Office. Similar to the light-duty model, in HDR-SAM a user first defines their hydrogen refueling market, with the refueling station capacity, the hourly fuel demand, and the annual station utilization. Selecting the technology used for refueling and the delivery modes that supply hydrogen to the station will determine the economic inputs and assumptions for a cost simulation. The results of a model run will be levelized fuel cost, station cost, and a cash flow estimation. If you're unfamiliar with the cell color coding scheme in the HDR SAM model, it's described here on the title worksheet. Blue indicates a calculated cell, and the formulas in these cells shouldn't be changed. Peach indicates that an input is required. Green indicates an optional input. Yellow indicates an informational cell. And orange indicates a drop down menu. Similar to the other hydrogen models, the scenario worksheet is for entering input information. The main station parameters are station type, fleet size, and production volume, but there are some additional cells to check as well. The general economic assumptions table below may be modified if you like, and the table below that contains some operational inputs like fueling rate and vehicle fill time that can be tailored for a scenario. To the right is the hourly profile table, this table has 24 rows, one for each hour of the day, and a column for specifying how many vehicles will be fueled within each hour. If the fleet size parameter above is changed, then make sure to balance the hourly profile table below. A message appears to remind you when you adjust that parameter, and if you click to calculate before adjusting the table, there'll be a pop-up reminder message as well. You might also have to adjust the dispensing inputs, like vehicle fill time and number of dispensers in the inputs table at the left. As with the HR SAM model, equipment costs can be found on the refueling station worksheets in the capital investment table. There are a few parameters that I'll adjust in the model to demonstrate their effect on results, but first I'll run a scenario to establish a baseline. On the scenario worksheet, I'll select gaseous H2 as the station type, then 20 bar H2 as the hydrogen source. I'll leave the fleet size at 20 vehicles and select 350 bar cascade as the dispensing option. And I'll select mid for the production volume. Before I run the simulation, I wanna point out some of the default dispensing parameters. The first being the utilization data in the hourly profile table. You can see that vehicles are fueling only during the first 10 hours of the day, which might be similar to a municipal waste collection fleet that is operating in the earlier part of the day. Two vehicles are fueled each hour, but if these increments were increased, you'd have to bear in mind the fueling time parameters in the table at the left, dispensed amount per vehicle, fueling rate, vehicle fill time, etc. The cells in the check for errors column of the hourly profile table contain a formula that will trip an error message if these timing parameters are out of balance. Now I'll click to calculate and we'll fast forward through the calculation process. 
In this base scenario, as reported on the scenario worksheet, the total refueling cost is $2.33 per kilogram of fuel. The refueling station capital investment required to meet the fuel demand in this scenario is a bit over $2 million, and the project will break even at just under seven years. The first modification to the base scenario that I'll demonstrate is changing the fleet size. Using the same parameters from before, I'll adjust the fleet size from 20 vehicles to 40 vehicles. Notice that when I make the adjustment, the hourly profile message appears, so I'll change the hourly profile such that four vehicles are filled each hour instead of two. Then I'll click to calculate. The total refueling cost decreases slightly to just over $2 per kilogram of fuel, and the refueling station capital investment increased to $3.4 million, a 70% jump over the baseline scenario. The break-even point is nearly the same at 6.86 years, so the equipment required to meet the added fuel demand causes a substantial increase in capital investment, although it doesn't much affect the break-even point. The second modification to the base scenario that I'll try is adjusting the fueling rate. Having reset the parameters for the base scenario, I'll select the fueling rate to be 7.2 kilograms of fuel per minute, double that of the base scenario rate. With this change, I'll run the model to get results. The total refueling cost is slightly higher at about $2.5 per kilogram of fuel. The refueling station capital investment is also slightly higher than in the base scenario, and the break-even point is nearly the same at just over seven years. So a takeaway here is that investing in equipment needed for quicker refueling will increase the total refueling cost, but there's little effect on the break-even point of the investment. The last modification I'll make is adjusting the station type. Instead of gas, I'll choose a liquid supply. For the dispensing option, I'll choose 350 bar via LH2 pump vaporization and mid for the production volume. Then I'll see what effect that has on my results. The total refueling cost drops to $1.51 per kilogram, about two thirds of the cost in the base scenario. There's a similar drop in capital investment, resulting in a $1.1 million investment cost. The break-even point is nearly identical. So it appears that a liquid fuel station type is cheaper to build and operate using these demand specifications than a gaseous fuel station. But the break-even point remains around seven years, as with the other scenarios. If you'd like to find out more about Argonne National Lab's hydrogen models, you can find other videos on the Argonne Hydrogen Models YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.